Hello and welcome everyone. On this pleasant evening, it is my privilege to welcome all of you on Space Talks. In the wake of COVID-19 pandemic, as an educationist and as our social responsibility, we don't want our students to miss any opportunity and engage them in something interesting and knowledgeable. So they do not miss out on anything. And so here we are today on behalf of the whole team of Space with immense pleasure we welcome our guest and a brilliant mind here, Dr. Ilyas Fernini from Sharjah Academy for Astronomy, Space Sciences and Technology, also known as ZAS. He is the General Deputy Director of Research Laboratories and Observatories. Dr. Fernini has worked on various topics of astronomy. Some of them are radio astronomy, space weather laboratory, CubeSat technology, Martian astronomer as atmosphere and many more. His interest and research are not only limited to him, but he has made sure to reach out to public, be it school students or college students or even general public who share the same interest for astronomy as him. So as you can see, he is here with us today. We at Space are constantly working towards the development of science and astronomy in India, aiming to create a scientifically aware society and contribute to the technological and social development of the country. Space is providing services and products since 2002. Our trademark will always be innovation, passion, and, and spread space knowledge of astronomy and space sciences amongst the masses. So first of all, before we begin, let us all congratulate Dr. Fernini for UAE on achieving such a complex mission and exploring the deep space with the marking of Arab's first interplanetary mission, HOPE. Congratulations, sir. Thank you and very much. The first three international missions to the red planet this summer. Let me tell you more about the, uh, the probe which has been sent uh, to Mars. The Al-Amal probe, as it is called in Arabic, is expected to reach Mars by February 2021. It will be the first time the UAE has orbited Mars and the probe will stay in orbit for a Martian year, that is 687 days on the Earth. To gather that data about Mars atmosphere and surely it will help us to know about planet Mars more. Before we proceed ahead, we would like to inform you that we have received more than 700 questions from students all over the world. And we are happy to discuss it with Sir today. And we believe that all your queries will be answered here today. So once again, we welcome Dr. Fernini and would like to thank him for joining us here today to answer all your questions on the topic Mars exploration. The screen is all yours, Sir. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Yogesh. I appreciate uh, your introduction and hopefully so uh, your student, your follower uh, will benefit from today's uh, session. Uh, so uh, before I, uh, we move on to all of your uh, humble uh, audience questions, so let me just take a couple of minutes to present uh, uh, our organization, our scientific uh, organization. So let me share my screen with you. Uh, okay. Just bear with me. Okay, so let me share. Uh, do you see my screen? Uh, yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. So uh, who we are at the, uh, here in the UAE, we are the Sharjah Academy for Assuming Space Science and Technology. Uh, we are a very young organization. We opened our doors in 2015. Uh, we are part of the University of Sharjah, which is one of the uh, 
uh, largest university in the UAE and also in the Gulf states. So we are part of it. Uh, we are uh, like a research institution uh, dedicated to space sciences. Uh, in terms of what we do, uh, this is just a, a very nice uh, picture of our uh, uh, academy. So uh, a drone view, as you can see, this golden drop, uh, drone that, uh, that you see here in front of you. So this represents uh, our huge planetarium and the whole building, the first floor, is where we have our space exhibitions and the ground floor is where we have all uh, the research labs. So the whole, the whole setup is like, as you can see, a, a mini scale solar system. So we have the sun at the center, we have the, the planets all around. So a very nice design. Hopefully, and hopefully your group will be able to visit us in the near future. Okay. So uh, in terms of organization, as I say, we are part of the University of Sharjah. Uh, we belong uh, to the uh, Department of Applied Physics uh, and Astronomy. Uh, we have several colleges, but let me just emphasize today on what we do at the Academy. So just to talk about uh, the University of Sharjah, DAPA is just uh, short for the Department of Applied Physics and Astronomy, and SAS is our acronym for the Sharjah Academy for Astronomy, Space Sciences and Technology. Uh, so we have uh, six astronomers. Uh, 45 students in the department, and also we are presenting right now five undergrad courses. Um, in terms of the academy, so we have uh, 50 research assistants, we have eight space science laboratories, and also three observatories. I will talk about them briefly. In terms of research, so we are very well versed in space sciences, in astronomy, in remote sensing, and also uh, in artificial intelligence. Uh, in terms of academia, uh, this coming fall, we are going to open uh, the first MSc in Astronomy Space Sciences uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the UAE. Uh, also, uh, an MSc in Remote Sensing, and hopefully by next year, an MSc in Our Space Engineering. Uh, in terms of our organization, so we, ha we have different units. So we have uh, uh, the, uh, what we call the administration unit. We have the, the academic affairs, we have the research affairs. Uh, the community outreach uh, also you need. In terms, so we have about uh, 30 persons in, in the organization. Our budget is about 50 million dirhams and uh, we receive more than 150,000 visitors every year. Uh, yes, this, this past three months, we were a little bit slow because, uh, uh, because of, the, uh, of the pandemic. Uh, so let me present our planetarium. It is one of the largest in the world, by the way. Uh, it, can, it, can, it can sit more than 200 persons very, very conveniently state-of-the-art uh, planetarium. We, ha we have high precision digital projectors plus, plus uh, this very well celebrated mega star project, uh, projector that can project 10 million stars. I believe if you bring a binocular inside the dome, you can see each of these single stars all together. So it is very, very well uh, uh, visited uh, planetarium by, uh, by, by school students from all, all ages and it is open uh, every day except for, the, except for, uh, for Friday. Uh, so we do receive a lot of people, especially the young minds uh, and also uh, in the weekend we see families and so on. Uh, we have the space exhibition as part of the planetarium. We have more than 35 space exhibitions. Uh, believe it or not, it is for all ages. They can come, they can ask. We have uh, uh, we have uh, scientific guys that can go through all of this exhibition, explain to them all what we're doing. Uh, in terms of the research lab, this is our heart. Uh, we have several ones. Uh, we have CubeSat, hopefully uh, next year, uh, quarter two, next year we're going to send our first CubeSat to space. It will be an X-ray uh, satellite to look for the sun and also for, for some extra stars. We have uh, uh, the largest meteorite center in the, in the Gulf area. We have a huge collection of meteorites uh, worth about $20 million. Uh, we do a lot in this, in, this, uh, in this center. We have also a space weather center that we are very much related to, uh, to the ionosphere and what, and what does the sun uh, do to it in terms of, co of communication and also GNSS uh, data collection and so on. Uh, we have a radio astronomy uh, lab with two uh, with two observatories, uh, we talk about them. We have also the high energy astrophysics. We have two optical observatories. We have uh, one optical observatory that has three telescopes inside and one dedicated uh, observatory that looks only for lunar impact. So we'd like to look for all of those debris that may fall on the surface of the moon. This is a new, uh, new observatory. Uh, 
Uh, what we do as uh, research, what are the projects? Uh, you can see to the left, we have this UAE Meteor Monitoring Network. We're able to build uh, a system of three towers. This one of them that you see to the, uh, uh, to the left. Uh, other, uh, each tower is about five meters tall. Uh, at the top, we have 17 cameras, and all of these cameras will look for what you call the this natural debris meteor. So we have one tower here in Sharjah, in the city of Sharjah. Uh, we have one tower about 500 kilometers from us here in uh, just uh, south of Abu Dhabi, and one tower about 150 kilometers. So these three towers are uh, they form like a, uh, a triangle. Why? Because we would like to cover the whole U.S. sky. What do we do? As I said. Uh, we, uh, we observe uh, space, uh, we observe meteors, and up to now we have observed more than 20,000 meteors. Uh, this is also part of what you call the space situation awareness. Uh, we have also this, in the middle, we have this INOR sound, the part of the space weather. What we do here, uh, we uh, send signals to the upper atmosphere between the two to about 50 megahertz, and we get the reflected waves. We'd like to, to know how is the atmosphere affected by the sun. Uh, we have also this GNSS station, so we take uh, signals from all from all the satellite GPS, GLONASS, uh, Beidou. So we take we would like to know also uh, about uh, the state of the atmosphere. Uh, in terms of radio astronomy, as I said, we have two observatories. We have this decametic radio telescope that you see to the left, uh, just uh, uh, arrays uh, uh, wires uh, to listen to the Sun and Jupiter at a very specific frequency, 20.1 megahertz. Uh, in the middle, we have uh, our 40 radio, uh, radio interferometer. It is made of three telescopes. Each telescope is about five meters. Uh, we put these three telescopes uh, at the vertices of a right triangle to simulate a 40 meter radio dish. It is a unique in the world. Uh, it works at 1.4 gigahertz. And uh, uh, this is, uh, as we can see, this is uh, in French a bijou for us. So, it's, so it will do a lot of research. Uh, we have also uh, the CubeSat lab. What you see to the right, it's, it is our ground station uh, that we are going to use to communicate with our, with our uh, Sharjah Sat, uh, CubeSat, hopefully uh, by the second quarter of, two, of 2021. Uh, in the Meteor Center, we also, because uh, we have this uh, UAE three towers, uh, they do observe meteors. Some of them, they do fall uh, here on, on the ground and we need to search for them. So we have a special team, we have a machine learning team that is teaching a drone how to go to the desert and collect this meteorite. And we also do the analysis uh, of these stones. So we have a meteorite analysis unit. Uh, we do the preliminary tests in our academy and the main tests, we have to do them at the university. And also we have this high energy astrophysics lab uh, that, is, that, we are, that we do research in stellar astrophysics uh, in AG and active galactic nuclei and also in black holes and also neutron stars. Okay, now, now let me talk about uh, the Mars Hole mission. Uh, we are part of the uh, science local team because we have two teams. We have an international team and we have the uh, local, uh, local science team. Uh, we started on this project uh, since six years ago as part of the science local team. Uh, so the main satellite uh, instruments, so well, the, the, they were built by several American universities, University of Colorado, Arizona State University, University of California, Berkeley. Uh, three main instruments that work in the UV, in the infrared, and also we have an imager. So the main thing about this uh, Mars home mission is to be able to study, to study the Mars atmosphere. It should be, it should be the first uh, spacecraft dedicated to the Martian weather. We have here on Earth uh, Earth weather, but this will be dedicated to the Martian weather because if you have a special orbit uh, uh, around, around the Martian equator and to be able to be as close as 22,000 kilometers as you can see it on this slide. So uh, all of these instruments would like to uh, make the link between the lower atmosphere and the upper atmosphere of Mars. And also to answer one very, very important question that the MAVEN spacecraft did not answer is why is the Mars, why is it losing its atmosphere? We believe that uh, Mars was some time ago uh, a livable planet a couple of billion years ago. It had uh, a good, uh, good uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, sir, the video uh, is actually paused. For water to stay liquid, but to... 
yes mars does not have a, does not have a global uh, magnetic field so it, it may be so 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 the mass formation hopefully we bring up this uh, this uh, uh, this this uh, answer to these questions uh, this map will show just only uh, the uh, the path taken by uh, uh, by uh, by the Mars hub, it was launched July 20, and hopefully by February 2021, it will reach. It will take it a couple of months, and hopefully by May 2021, we start getting our data and also calibrated. So uh, this is this is a breakthrough satellite, and hopefully the whole the whole uh, science uh, Martian uh, uh, people uh, specialized in the Martian atmosphere will will benefit from it because the science. As we say, science is for everyone. It is not for just one single country. So this space cut will be beneficial to everyone worldwide. So the data will be available to everyone worldwide. And we are preparing to receive the data. Uh, so we've just prepared since more than six years, as I said. So uh, just to finish up, so uh, we are really very well funded by the University of Sharjah. Uh, we have also this U.S. Space Agency responsible for the uh, uh, for the Mars Hub and also by Mohammed Benar uh, uh, Space Center, which is also responsible for the uh, Mars Hub mission. So uh, we do a lot of scientific publications. Uh, we organize a lot of workshops in terms of the academics. So we have, as, as I say, the MS in Astronomy and Space Sciences coming very soon, uh, the MS in Aerospace Engineering, the MS in GIS Remote Sensing. Uh, so we are a research institution and also we, we are an academic institution uh, that uh, that does all of these activities. In terms of uh, our international collaboration, we have several collaboration. Uh, we have with Germany, we have with England, uh, we have also with, so with, uh, with France, with Italy, and also with Istanbul Technical University, which is, which is our partner for the CubeSat uh, uh, application. Uh, we are very ambitious, so we, uh, we are expanding. Hopefully, we're going to have a data center, especially uh, for this coming mass formation our own machine shop where we can make our own tools. Uh, we are opening uh, an artificial intelligence lab, uh, a balloon and also suborbital rocket laboratory. So we'd like to send the small rockets uh, to 30, 40, 50 km to do some space weather experiments. And hopefully we are also planning to have an astronaut training center. So we did send last year one, you may remember that, Hazel uh, Al-Mansour, uh, he went to the ISS station. Uh, mm -hmm to be able here at the center to train these future uh, UAE astronauts. And also a robotic lab, and why not? Uh, hopefully, uh, we, may, we may be responsible for building the next Martian rover uh, by 2117, as you, may, uh, as you may have heard. So just to summarize, so this is who we are. So we, we are very well established. Uh, we have several research labs. We have several observatories. Uh, we have so many uh, scientific world, uh, world class scientific instruments. We do a lot of publications. Uh, we are part of the uh, Martian Hope mission. Uh, so, this is what, what we do here. And so, thank you very much uh, for this invitation. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that it was very wonderful to know about uh, all these things that what uh, Sharjah University is doing and how you are bringing it uh, like for the students uh, all around the world. So it is actually the question for like uh, students, all students have. Uh, so I would request uh, that uh, how actually they can enroll themselves in, the, in such kind of programs or in, uh, if they want to pursue astronomy, how they can go forward towards it, sir? Well, you know, uh, uh, whenever you do space sciences, it uh, is... Is it, uh, sir, can you please uh, uh, like stop the present screen option? So when, when we do space sciences, it is not just for scientists, it is for engineers and so on. Uh, we have this uh, STEM problem about science, technology, engineering, and math, but uh, students do not go to these majors. Well, to be a space scientist, you need to be, first of all, someone who loves to do math, who loves to do physics. So to go to science tracks, to go to engineering tracks is very important, especially from the universe age. So you have that vocation to love science. You have that vocation to love math. You have that, you must have that vocation uh, to love uh, doing engineering. So you, you need to have that vocation to ask questions. How can I reach that point? You cannot be an astronaut if you don't know science. You cannot be uh, a space engineering if you, don't, if you do not know math. So these things are very important. That's why it is very important for a young mind to be very much interested 
uh, into, into science, into technology, into engineering, and also into math. So these are the backbone. Yes, you, we, cannot, we cannot be all scientists, but we cannot also be all businessmen. So we need to have like a balance between having people interested into science, into engineering, and also into other fields. But to be, to be part of this very, very beautiful space adventure, we need to love science. Science is, very, is everything. So open your heart and uh, love it uh, as if it were your life, because uh, you know, uh, to succeed in what you do, you must love it. If you don't love it, so don't follow it. I love science. I love astronomy. For me, it's my vocation. It's my life. I remember since I was maybe eight years old, I was very much interested into, into science, especially uh, the, first, the first lander on the, on, on the Martian surface, Viking 1 and Viking 2. I was following it since the late 70s, and the late 70s, we are not like today. Today, you are very lucky. You have social media, you have the internet. Well, during those days, I was following the news of Viking 1, Viking 2, only through the newspapers or maybe on TV. And even that time, we didn't have a, a very widely security TV. So you need to love science to succeed in space sciences. Right, sir. Right, sir. For any subject, we should say, like, uh, we, if we are not loving that particular subject, I don't think we are ever going to succeed in that particular thing. So, yes. for, uh, yeah. For astronomy, space sciences, we need to love it, and then only we can actually going to succeed. It's a wonderful to know that you are following it since 70s in the beginning of your age. So all the students who are hearing us, you should know that if you love it, you should actually start following it from now itself. So, yes. uh, sir, as as we see that uh, Israel re, Israel launched their Mars mission, Mangalyaan one, and now they are planning to launch their mission, Mangalyaan two, in 2024. Now, even UAE recently has launched a HOPE uh, mission to Mars. So what do you think? Uh, is there any future possibilities for, like, for India and UAE collaborating for such kind of uh, projects through space? Yes, 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 yes. I believe India is, is much, much uh, uh, very well versed into space exploration. So it went, it went, to, it went to Mars. Uh, so I believe there is... Uh, uh, there's some kind of uh, ongoing uh, cooperation uh, to have India help the need to go to the moon. So this is very important. So I believe uh, some of your scholars are already uh, in talk with the U.S. agency, with Mohammed Darash Space Center uh, for, this, uh, for this moon adventure. So, uh, you know, today space exploration is very expensive and you need collaboration uh, because you cannot start from, from scratch, from zero. You need to... Uh, uh, to combine efforts. India has very long experience in space exploration and we show the results. It was able to go to Mars and hopefully this will help the UE in the future. So collaboration uh, into space exploration is very much needed, yes. Right, sir, right. And for collaborations, I think with collaborations, I think we, get, we come up with better results and uh, with new ideas and new opportunities for, this, for everyone all around the world actually. Yes. Uh, so, sir, as uh, one of your paper on Mars, explore, uh, Mars atmosphere, it says that uh, on Mars, it is the highest atmospheric density of Mars is at about uh, 35 kilometers above Earth. So, making the Martian surface vulnerable, vulnerable to sun radiation and not being able to retain heat. Also, Mars uh, atmosphere uh, being filled with uh, carbon dioxide mostly. Yes. So, sir, yeah. So then why do you think, why are we still focusing on Mars to inhabit someday? Why, uh, how it will be possible for us to have a life over there, to, like, to have a sustain, to sustain a life over there? So well, when you, look, when you look at the Martian surface, the one that we have behind us as a background, uh, some Martian surface features, they look like Earth. Look, what we see on Earth, we see it on the surface of Mars. So why is it so? So was Mars like Earth sometime before? As we said, Mars, 96% uh, of its atmosphere is carbon dioxide. It has a very, very thin atmosphere. Uh, if you land on the surface of Mars without any proper protection, all what you have as liquid will evaporate because you don't have enough pressure to hold it liquid. So why is the Mars atmosphere so thin now? Uh, from, what, what, from what we see on the surface, it, may, it might have a, a very thick one. But uh, as I said, because it has such uh, a very unlocalized magnetic field, 
it was not able to build a very strong magnetosphere around it. That's why the sun and the solar wind, these very highly charged particles, highly uh, charged particles were able to strip the Martian atmosphere of its atmosphere. So uh, we, have, we have done some research here at the University of Sharjah is to uh, simulate or to build an artificial Martian atmosphere. We'll be able to, as we say, we'll be able to terraform Mars, to uh, make it as Earth, livable again. So our research, our primary result that yes, we can make it livable, but only for a couple, for a couple of months. We need, like, we need uh, so, uh, something global to make uh, the Martian atmosphere thicker than it is today. So we may add extra, extra heat. Uh, so there are so many, so many processes, there are more than 20 processes that people are talking about it, about how we can make. But for sure, uh, some of them may be, may be science fiction, not feasible because um, Mars, yes, it is one quarter of Earth, but it's still a big planet. Uh, so we may, do, we may do something localized, yes. Uh, we may change it for a couple of months, yes, but it won't stay globally. So, uh, so we'd like to understand. We have sent uh, so many spacecraft to Mars and we, always the question is, why is it as it is now? And some people may say, look, we, you have sent so many, so many spacecraft and you, you still don't have an answer to all of these questions. And the answer is yes, we still don't have because every spacecraft that goes there will bring more questions to, uh, to answer for the next spacecraft. So this month, as we said, uh, we have sent, so the UAE has sent one space, uh, this past month, uh, the UAE has sent one spacecraft. Uh, China has sent one, the US has sent one, a rover. China, China has sent uh, uh, an orbiter, a rover, and also a lander. Uh, the UAE has sent an orbiter. So all of these spacecrafts, will add to each other knowledge. So that's why it is very important to do this exploration because some people say, oh, look, it is, it is very expensive. Yes, it is. But it's part of space exploration. This part of the humankind to understand the other worlds. Because uh, we may, if we do understand why it did happen to Mars, we may understand also what will happen to Earth in the future. So by studying other planets, we may be able to save Earth in the future. And this is not science fiction, because as you know, planet Earth is living uh, its worst, its worst uh, decades. We have this global warming, we have this, uh, what you call the ozone hole problem. So we have this, uh, so we need to understand all of this globally. That's why we have this field called uh, planetary, uh, uh, or planetology uh, comparison. So we compare planets with each other to understand what we see on one, uh, is it applicable to the other one in the, uh, in the future? Right, sir, right. Actually, and, uh, and we, can, we can also say that it is actually a one-way journey, one-way journey to the Mars, because it will be very difficult to survive over there with uh, so many difficulties. But yeah, in future, we will, I think we'll come up with a certain solution to like survive over there. And as you mentioned, terraform, sir. So uh, in, in your research paper as well, it is mentioned that uh, we can make uh, mass atmosphere, like we can uh, terraform over there by injecting it with oxygen and other ga gases, right? So the, but the solar will, wind will strip away the terraformed atmosphere within like say 11 to 20, 72 hours. So how are we aiming to overcome such kind of uh, problems to uh, like sustain a life over there, sir? Well, uh, well, one way is to go there and uh, to build uh, a Martian base. As you may know, the UAE is planning by 2117 mm -hmm. uh, to have a Martian settlement. You may say 2117, this is 100 years from now. I may, I may not be around. Yes, this is how we do science. So we plan for the future. So we may be, we may be going there, but not to leave... Uh, in the in the in the outside uh, in the outside air, but we need to build the world bases. We need to build Martian bases, Martian settlement, and we, we may have people uh, living there uh, for a long period of time. Because if you go there and build your Martian base, you don't expect to come back the next morning because you have to stay at least at least 20, 20 months to wait for the next opportunity to leave uh, Mars and so on. 
So we may have, we may go there, we may settle on Mars, but uh, we need to build something there, there. We need to build some, some bases. As people today are planning to build some uh, lunar bases, so something on the surface of the moon or maybe underground because the moon is a very harsh world. It doesn't have a, a magnetic field, doesn't have a, an atmosphere. So the sun is going to bath you with solar radiation. You may need to build your uh, lunar bases underground. But for Mars, so we may, uh, we may settle. Uh, we may accept to build our uh, bases there and live there to do scientific uh, experiments. Uh, or maybe, maybe why not? This is not impossible. Uh, maybe for uh, tens, maybe for hundreds of us to go, to go there and live uh, for a long period of time. So this is the future. Everything is possible. There's nothing impossible except if you die. <laughs> right, sir. You can't return. <laughs> right, yes. right, right. And I know like people all around the world are actually going, uh, doing research work and uh, like trying to solve all these problems so that we can have a life on another planet and they're trying, I think everyone is trying their best. And as you said that till we do not die, we should keep exploring. Right? Yes. So, yeah. So as we, as I mentioned earlier itself that we have received many questions, like more than 700 questions are there. Uh, we have received and it was very difficult to choose like only few questions among all, all among so many questions. So uh, we'll start with uh, some of the question and uh, they, there are questions from uh, different college students, students, uh, the students who are studying in the school. So like, and in fact, from the teachers as well, sir, I would like to inform teachers have also asked uh, questions uh, like they were very excited. I think they're very, very excited to know more about our, as I, or I can say the future home, the Mars. Can we say the future home, the Mars? So. Uh, let us take our first question, uh, who, which is from Bhargav. Uh, Bhargava is uh, pursuing BTEC from IIST College, having a question that we know that Mars has no magnetic field. Then how to survive on Mars atmosphere? What are the challenges can be faced during human exploration to Mars? Well, yes, as I said earlier, so Mars doesn't have a global magnetic field. It has just some localized magnetic field, and this may be one of the main reasons why it did lose its, uh, uh, its atmosphere. So the only way if we go there and, uh, and go to Mars and live is to build a uh, Martian base. We, we need to build our settlement there. We need to have special, uh, special uh, house there that can protect us uh, for sure against, uh, against the Martian, the, the Martian uh, tough, uh, tough weather there because sometimes Mars, uh, Mars as you know, does live uh, very, very stormy uh, not days, but weeks and months of, uh, so of dust storms that may cover the whole planet. So we need to uh, build our settlement uh, to accommodate us and also to be safe. So, uh, so uh, as I said, you cannot just go there and live on Mars as we do on Earth. Uh, so you have to have a special habitation uh, to be able to survive, yes. Right, right, sir. Uh, we need a proper type of uh, like, uh, like, situa like situation or we can say a proper um, colonization should be there to survive on Mars. Very, yes, like, yes. Yeah. And, and once, you, once, once you go there, so you, it, it, so you need to be self-independent, uh, self meaning that all what you do on Mars should, uh, all what you need for your life on Mars for, 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 for very long uh, years, everything should be, uh, should be uh, found there. So you need to do some mining, you need to find uh, that underwater that you have there below the surface. So everything should be there because you cannot carry everything with you to Mars. It will be heavy, it will be costly. So, so that, that's why most of the resources, you must find them there on, on Mars, either on the surface or underground, especially for water, because we do believe that water is still underground. So we just need to dig it out. Right, sir. And also, I think that uh, physically, uh, we need to be strong as well as mentally because we will be uh, staying over there. And uh, I think not everyone is going to get a chance to visit Mars. So I yes, think partly well, one or two people who will be surviving over there. So it is, it is very important for one person or two per people to actually yeah. survive in such kind of... Yeah it, uh, it, 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 yeah, it may look nonsense, but believe it or not, there are some people now doing the research and how to build that settlement, uh, what kind of chair you're going to choose, 
what kind of window you're going to have, what kind of table you're going to have, because as we said, you're going to stay long, long, long months. So the environment that you have within your habitation must facilitate uh, your, your living. So you may, you may also need to have a very, very strong, uh, uh, strong personality and also very strong character to be able to live there for such a long time. And we, you may be associated with maybe five or six pe people for such a long time. Here on earth, as you may know, if you are with your wife, maybe for one hour, you get some, uh, some, 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 uh, some, uh, some shouting. How about if you are there with five or six people for two, for two years? So you have, to, you have to learn to accept the other. You have to learn how to accept the, the environment because everything that you have there will be, uh, will be in cost, will be alien. Right, 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 sir. What, what a great example, actually. I hope, Bhargav, you, you have got your answer and it was very interesting to know it in such a form so that you can understand it in a very clear way. Uh, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, the next question is from Aryan Anand. He is a student from class 9 of Bal Bharti Public School, Manasa. Uh, his question is, sir, related to you, that what is your secret of success? How you reached to this uh, stage and what is your secret of success? Well, uh, my secret of success is uh, uh, my best advice that uh, having a degree is nothing. It is not the end of it. It's the beginning of everything. And uh, believing in what you do is very important. And uh, being knowledgeable is very important. Knowledge does not stop. So once you have that knowledge, when you have that vocation, you can do everything because nothing will stop you. Once you know something, as I say to my students, once you know something, you can fly. I teach you something today that maybe six billion people do not know. And because you know it, you can fly. When you are asked, you say, I know. That's why you have to learn. You have to learn. You have to learn. And always, if you do well and people complain, let them break. Because you do it because you love it. And that's very important. You love it for the sake of science, for the sake of people to know, because we are not here forever. So we need to at least to leave a, a fingerprint that people will use for generation after you. So learning is very important. Learning does not stop by getting your degree. It is an ever ending process. That's very important. Right, sir, right. And very well said, sir. It never stops. And when you have knowledge, you can, uh, not, no one can stop you. Yes. So you can proceed in any direction when you, when you know what you have to do, when you have knowledge, so you can move ahead. And in this kind of situation, when everybody is at home and most of them are actually frustrated and they are not able to go out. So yeah. it, I think everyone must listen to you that do not get, uh, do not like fear from the, these uh, small circumstances. Yes. You should proceed ahead with the, with the love which you have. Uh, for astronomy or for any uh, for any science subject, you yes. proceed with it. I think. And never, and never say when you learn something, never say that it, it is not useful. It may not be useful today or tomorrow, but after tomorrow, it will be useful. That's very important. So it, you, you must not stop learning. Very important. Right, sir. Right, right sir. So Aryan, I hope you uh, got your answer. Uh, so let's uh, move on to the next question, which is from uh, Shubhangi Aprajata. She's again a student of class 8 from Tagore International School. Uh, so she, she asks, sir, why is uh, Jezero Crater a suitable place to search for evidence of ancient life? What is the question? Do you understand the question? Uh, she, it, she asks that uh, uh, why is uh, uh, Jezero Crater a suitable place to search for evidence of ancient life? Well, you know, so uh, craters are formed by what? Craters are formed by uh, falling uh, leftover of the solar system. Uh, so uh, you may know that our solar system at the beginning of its formation was, uh, was like hell, uh, especially for those uh, uh, terrestrial plants like uh, Mercury, like Venus, like Earth and Mars, because they, had, uh, they were forming solar surfaces and all what was left on them and found billions of creatures. So uh, we may have 
because whenever we, we go to, to a crater, we look for what? We look for the leftover. Because the leftover bring to us what? The leftover bring to us uh, the, uh, the remains of the solar system. As I say, we have here a SAST meteorite center. So we collect uh, meteorites. Uh, we observe meteors. If they do fall, we do collect them as meteorites. By analyzing, the, by analyzing these meteorites, we can know for sure the chemical compositions uh, of the suns, and also we know how was, how was our solar system at the beginning, at the beginning of its formation. So, uh, so that's why these craters are very important uh, to figure out the seeds of, of life, uh, because they're still, uh, they're still uh, in them the secret of the formation of the solar system. So we need to, we need to explore that. Right, sir. Uh, right. And that is why we also study comets, uh, because we believe that they hold uh, the, actually the beginning, they, they can tell us what, what the beginning, yes. about the beginning of the universe. Yes, so these comets are uh, different from, uh, from, from meteor because these comets are frozen bodies. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite frozen, so uh, whenever they come to us, so they may left some seeds, and these seeds, uh, when the planet passes around, especially Earth, so we see them as uh, meteors or our meteor showers. And uh, if, we can, if we can collect, and we did, uh, this see these dust particles, uh, we know for sure the exact composition of the, uh, of, the uh, of our solar system. Yes. Right. Uh, so I hope, Shubhangi, you got your answer that uh, why we are searching in the craters for the ancient life. And uh, for like one information that we also have one crater uh, in India as well. Uh, Lona crater in Maharashtra. So mm -hmm. let's move on to the next question uh, from Harman Deep Kaur. He is a student of, uh, he is a BSc honor student uh, in physics from Punjab University. Wanted to ask about, uh, he wants to know more about astrophysics. He, astrophysics. Uh, he says, I have a lot of interest in astronomy and I want to know how can I pursue my career in astronomy or astrophysics. So I think well, you can answer it. Uh, well, being, well, being a physics student is the right way to start being an astrophysicist because what is astrophysics? It's the use of physics to study this universe. Myself, I have a BS in physics. When I finished my BS was in physics, but I had a very great interest in astronomy since my young age. So yeah. physics is the start, is the seed for you to be specialized in astrophysics because you will have all the basics to be able to understand uh, star formation, galaxy formation, planet formation, the motion of planets around the sun and so on. Uh, so how, how, how do black holes live their lives? Uh, what is the end of a star? So all of this, you need to have a physics background. So when you go to a physics uh, curriculum, you have to study uh, general physics, classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, uh, uh, so uh, uh, all of this type of, of physics is, uh, is a must uh, to, be, to be an astrophysicist. So, that, so you are on the right track. Right, sir. So I, and with his question, I think many of our students actually got their answers who want to pursue astrophysics uh, like uh, in, the, in the future and want to become uh, like want to do astronomy or, uh, or anything or want to do study space science. So I hope you all got your answers with this question. Uh, so let's move on to the next question, uh, which is from uh, Ram Dayal Singh. He's uh, doing MSc from BHU. He's asked, sir, that how atmospheric escape processes can be derived using Hope Mars mission? Well, you know, uh, you saw so many rockets leaving Earth. Mm -hmm. Earth's a given mass has a given size. If that rocket does not have enough speed, it cannot, it cannot escape Earth gravity. Earth escape velocity is about 11.2 kilometers per second. So all of the rockets, if they do not have this speed, mm -hmm. they, will, uh, they, will may, they will go at maybe 10, 15 kilometers, they will fall out. If we take Earth as a planet, it has a very good sized atmosphere. Why? Because all of the particles that we have within Earth's atmosphere does not have enough speed to beat Earth escape speed. So we have the right, we have the right mass, we have the right temperature for all of these gases 
to stay around. So earth was able to keep them. So uh, if a plant is hotter than earth, okay, for sure, all of the gas particles inside will have a higher speed. And if the plant is small, for sure, so uh, those gases can escape the plant and they will have a plant without any atmosphere. So the mass of the planet, its size, and also how hot it is. What do we mean by how hot it is? How close to the sun it is? Because uh, most, not all planets, they don't have their own energy, the energy they get from the sun. If I take uh, only here about our own solar system, so Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, all of these planets, the energy they take it from where? They take it from the sun. So that's why whenever we discover a planet, we ask this very, very intelligent question. How hot is its star? And this uh, the planet, this is from the, from the star. We tell us, will that planet will have an atmosphere or not? If you go to Mercury, it has nothing. It's very close, very hot. Mm -hmm. Everything has escaped. So it, 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 it is like, a, it is like a, a, a naked planet. If you, go, if, if you go to the moon, same, same. It does not have enough mass to hold anything around. When I say it doesn't have atmosphere, it doesn't mean that uh, it is zero. It is some particles per, uh, per centimeter cube. If I take just an example, not to be very scientific, if, if uh, for the moon, the atmosphere is about uh, 10 to the 5, which is about 100,000 particles per centimeter cube at moon level, surface level. If I go to Earth at sea level, it's about 10 to the power of 29. So it is, it is, a, it is an appreciable atmosphere. So uh, if I go to the moon, it's less than, uh, if I go to Mars, it's less than 1%. Well, there are these physical factors for a planet to keep its, uh, its atmosphere around. How hot is the star? How big it is? in terms of mass and size, and also how far away it is from the sun. It's very important. Right, sir, right. So, and uh, we can say like Mars is quite far away from us and uh, is going to be our next uh, home, we can say. And so all these things are really important for us to know. And that is why we are sending all these missions uh, to Mars. And recently NASA also has launched uh, their Perseverance mission uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the Mars to know more about it. And I hope, sir, what do you think? Like how all these, uh, uh, like India's or UAE or NASA's missions, how are they, are they go actually collectively going to help the world in knowing Mars a, a Mars better way? Well, you know, uh, knowledge is universal. Uh, whenever we send a spacecraft, uh, so this spacecraft result will be used by all the scientific worldwide. That's why I say it. Uh, today, uh, collaboration is a must. Okay, so you may have you may have the tool, you may have the spacecraft, but you may ha you may not have enough scientists to deal with the data. So, but there is there is there is an army of scientists worldwide that will be very eager to take all the data that will be produced by uh, by the Mars Hope mission, by the Perseverance uh, uh, rover of the uh, of the US, and also by Ta uh, Taiwan. Uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese, Chinese rover. So all of this data will be used worldwide by, scient uh, by scientists. Uh, it is not, it is, science is not private. It belongs to every one of us. So everyone has a right to, uh, uh, to get access to this data and UAE is one of them. So all the data will be made public and uh, everyone, everyone who is interested uh, in planet formation, in planetary science, uh, we'll be able to use this data. So it is, uh, it is international, it is universal. Right, uh, rightly said, sir, knowledge is universal. It is rightly yes. said. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I hope, Ramdayal, you got your answer about uh, uh, like how Hope Mission is going to help. So let's move on to the next question, uh, which is from Aziz Ahmed. He's studying in, the, in a college, he's in third year, and he's studying in Chandigarh Engineering College. He says that, should we colonize moon first before starting Mars exploration with the human? human? <laughs> yes, uh, well, uh, so, so many people have asked this question. Yes, why don't we go first, first go to the moon, right. then take the moon as a step to go to Mars? It is. Some people are thinking that way, yes. And some people are thinking the other way. So, whatever way you decide, so we're going to reach, uh, we did reach the moon several times. Uh, hopefully, uh, in the next decade, we're going to build uh, a lunar base. 
and we may take it, yes, as the students say, we may take it as, as, as a starting base to go to Mars. But this does not stop us from going to Mars directly. Yes, uh, the moon is only uh, a couple of days away from us. It is easier, okay? Uh, so uh, all possibilities uh, are, are open. So uh, it all depends. Uh, it all depends on what I'd like to do next. Yeah, right, sir. Or we can do one thing that we can establish a launching pad on the universe uh, on the moon, and then we can directly go to Mars from there. We can do well, it. Well, as well, 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 well. Some people may say that the moon is uh, an easy uh, is an easy target. So the moon is very difficult. It's very difficult to uh, uh, first of all to reach, and also very difficult to build a base there because you know. Uh, you don't have the right protection as you do here on Earth. If you go to the moon, as I said, if we'd like to send people there, several astronauts, you, you must build enough, uh, you must have enough protection for your people there. Either you have the right equipment, the right material to build uh, something that will shield your people from the sun radiation, or as we said earlier, you have to do it underground. So, uh, and also, and also, uh, I have done some research before. Uh, how about if we build uh, uh, some observatories, some optical telescope there on the surface of the moon? Because uh, you know the, the moon there, you have uh, you have two weeks of night time and two weeks of daylight. So if you build your telescope there, so you have two weeks of night time and observe uh, continuously. But uh, you know that on the moon, if only a small micrometeorite falls on the moon, it may eject so much dust particles. And those dust particles, if they, too, if they do stick to your mirror, mm. it is impossible to clean them. So you may, have, you, may have your, you may have your habitat after a couple of, uh, I won't say after a couple of years, only after a couple of weeks, you may have it full of dust. <laughs> right, sir. of course, and will, uh, impossible to remove it, actually. So uh, let's move on to the next question, which is from Arshia Varmani. She is a student of class six, and she is uh, from uh, Tagore International School. She says that, as per my reading, Mars is covered with 95 approximately carbon dioxide, and mostly the orange color is due to iron content, which cause rust, and due to low atmospheric pressure, where water is not present, then why are we behind Mars to find out if any life exists there? When the basic requirement of existence of life is not met? Well, we know we have uh, now uh, a spacecraft by the name of Curiosity. It is a US spacecraft, right. a US rover. It is called Curiosity. Yeah. So, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the, the Martian surface looks like Earth in terms of canyon, in terms of uh, dead uh, volcanoes like Olympus Mons, the highest mountain on the, on, on the solar system is about as high as 27 kilometers. So, so many Martian uh, features, they do resemble Earth. So we are curious, was it like Earth before? And because it is under space exploration, we'd like to know that. We have that, uh, we have that uh, eagerness to have an answer to this question. Yes, for some people that say, who cares going to Mars? Right. If it doesn't look like, uh, so what? But this is what you call this part of the human uh, exploration and also curiosity, we'd like to know. Knowing is part of our success uh, in this universe. We should evolve, we should uh, know much better what is around us. That's why in, the, in space exploration, uh, everyone is a winner. What do you mean by everyone is a winner? If we build the satellite, if we build the uh, spacecraft, okay, who's going to do it? Well, thousands of space engineers. And these space engineers were sometimes students. And so it is like the whole community participating in space ex uh, exploration. It is not just one type of specific of people. That's why whenever you say space exploration, so scientists are going to, uh, to benefit from it, engineers are going to benefit from it, new technologies are going to rise up. So that's why all what we're using today as internet, as social media, as, as, as GPS and, and so on, it is because of what? It is because of space exploration. Right. 
So we used to, we used to have in the 80s uh, to have this program called Star Wars. So the U.S. wanted to build a shield uh, above the, the U.S. airspace. A shield of what? A shield of uh, very specialized spacecraft with very powerful laser to protect the U.S. against any missile attacks. Well, this program, because it was so sophisticated, did not succeed. But part of the research done there is being used in astronomy. When we observe now, especially using an optical telescope on Earth, our atmosphere does, does fluctuate. So we see these stars twinkling. So now because of the research done in this Star Wars program, we can use laser technology to limit this twinkling. This is called adaptive optics with active optics. So all what you do today as space exploration going to these outer planets will be beneficial to Earth here for decades to come. So it is not a lost, a lost cause or a lost uh, exploration. It is useful now and to be useful for decades to come for all of us. Right, sir. And as we say in science that even a failure is a learning. Even yes. if we fail, we know that we do not have to do this. So it is a learning for us. So I think uh, with that, Arshia must be uh, l uh, learning that she's in right now in class six only. So I think Arshia, right, uh, you will be learning this, that even if you fail in, uh, or you, if you do not succeed in something which you wanted to do, it is actually an experience and you can actually learn from it and move ahead. So, uh, so let's move on to the next question. And it is a very good question, <laughs> I would say, because it is related to career, sir. Uh, so Kritika Sehgal, from, uh, she's doing MSc Chemistry right now from JC Bose University of Science and Technology. Uh, she's asking, is there any traces of water and oxygen on Mars? And she also wanted to know that if uh, she is, since she is pursuing MSc Chemistry, so uh, can she have a career in astrochemistry? Yes, we have a field called astrochemistry, yes. Well, uh, for our question, oxygen exists everywhere. Above that, water, water exists everywhere. Everywhere in the universe. Wherever you go, you have water. You have it either as a vapor, uh, which is as gas. You have it as liquid, as on Earth. Or you have it as solid, as ice. So if I take Mars, it has uh, only two, as far as we know. Water that exists as gas, or as ice. Why? Well, because that planet has a, a very, a very small mass, and that water, because of the very small mass and also very thin atmosphere, it cannot stay liquid. If you are there on Mars early morning, you're going to see what? You're going to see a very whitish layer, which is a frost, mixture of what? A mixture of carbon dioxide and also water. Right. But uh, by sunrise over there, well, that ice here on Earth, okay, if you, if you take a piece of glass, if you melt it down, it will become liquid, liquid. On Mars, it won't become liquid because of the lack of atmosphere, lack of atmospheric pressure, that uh, ice of a uh, mixture of carbon dioxide and water will become a gas, this called sublimation. So water exists there, exists as what, as vapor or as ice. We would like to dig it out from below and hopefully this insight, this insight uh, uh, Martian, sp uh, Martian uh, uh, spacecraft uh, staying now on the surface of Mars, maybe if it does dig uh, deep enough, it may, it may give us a clue that yes, below the surface of Mars, uh, liquid water still exists. So water exists everywhere. Right, sir. And since, since she was asking about being an astrochemist, uh, like, uh, with that I remember the Carl Sagan quote, uh, that it yes. takes the nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, and yes. the iron in our blood, the carbon in our apple pie. They yes. all, all came from, uh, the, uh, from the interior of collapsing the star. So we all yes. are made up of star stuff. Yes. As I said, astrochemistry is a field of, of science, of space sciences. So we do use chemistry a lot to understand the chemical composition of anything in the solar system. So... Uh, so uh, you are on the right path uh, to be a space scientist. Right. So, Kritika, I hope you got your answer. And uh, let's move on to the next question, which is from a teacher. Her name is K.V. Jotsna. Uh, she's uh, from Manasthali, uh, Manasthali School. She's asking, what are the adv advantages of exploration of Mars? 
Well, uh, as I said earlier, so Mars does resemble Earth. Uh, so by uh, understanding uh, the present state of Mars, why did he, did he become as it is now, like a dead planet, not like Earth, a livable one? So we may uh, find uh, answers uh, to questions that we have here on Earth about the future of Earth. So by analyzing, by understanding uh, all of the Martian uh, physical features, uh, characteristics, uh, so we may know our future here on Earth because uh, there are convincing evidences that uh, Mars was like Earth before a couple of billion of years ago. So what happened to it? So if we know that answer by sending all of these spacecraft, and if every time we send the spacecraft, it will bring us uh, more questions. So we may understand our future here, here on Earth. So it is time well spent uh, understanding Mars. So that's why uh, Mars is our next, uh, our, next, uh, our next savior. So we may save Earth by understanding exactly uh, what happened to Mars. It was livable, it lost its atmosphere, and its water bec be became uh, scarce. So it became uh, uh, vapor, it became ice, and we may have some of it uh, below ground. So we'd like to know that. That's why understanding the other planets is good for on planet Earth. That's why we have this, what you call the, we call it comparative planetology. We compare planets with each other. If I take Mars, okay, has a very thin atmosphere, 96% of carbon dioxide, it is a cold place. Then if I go to the opposite, if I talk about Venus, it has also 96% of carbon dioxide, a very thick atmosphere, but it is a hell. And Earth is in between at about, as we said, uh, uh, we, we usually try not to use numbers as we do, not so big numbers. We take the, the, the distance between Earth and the sun as a unit of distance. We say that we are one, one from the sun, one EU, one astronomical unit. Right. We are, we are one EU from the sun. Venus is 0 0.9 EU and the, uh, and the, uh, and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, and, uh, and Mars is about 1.5. So, uh, so uh, Venus is 0 0.7 EU. We are 1 EU and Mars is 1.5. So this is the closest. But there are big differences among the three worlds. Even Venus is our sister planet. It is hell. It is hell. It's very hot because of this huge, uh, huge amount of carbon dioxide. So by analyzing these three planets, so is... Uh, part of what you call comparative planetology. We'd like to understand each planet by itself. Mars is a must for, Earth, for us to understand. Why did it become like a dead planet today? So we are very eager right. to answer. Right, so we are actually, we are very eager to know that what actually happened. And if we will get the answers, so we'll get the answers to like, if something like this can happen to Earth as well or not. Well, we have, we, we have some scenarios that uh, Mars has lost its magnetic field. Yeah. Not global like Earth, it is localized. Mm. And that's why when the sun is very active, when it does send this very uh, fast moving uh, charged particles, which, which we call the solar wind. So it was able to strip these ions that were around the Martian atmosphere, it was able to strip them. And even this Maven, this Maven spacecraft, when it went there and was uh, started to observe, it did observe, it did find uh, some particles escaping the Martian atmosphere. Uh, you may have seen there's a very nice video showing this escape. So, uh, so we, may, we, may, we may have now a partial answer that the sun solar wind is responsible because the Mars doesn't have enough magnetic field. It doesn't have a, a magnetosphere like Earth does to protect us against these highly charged particles coming from the sun. Right, sir, right. Uh, so with this, we will move on to our next question, uh, which is from a school student. Uh, he is Arman Sina, uh, studying in class nine from Kulachi Hansraj Model School. He is asking, so what are the biological factors that can make Mars 
uh, biological factors for the human being that can make Mars a habitable place? Well, uh, the main the main problem with Mars that is uh, is the sun. So if you go there, you don't have enough shield uh, to protect yourself. You don't want to go there. And if there is a very strong uh, solar storm, so uh, you'll be there bombarded by very high energy particles. So uh, your DNA may be affected. So uh, that's why we'd like to understand uh, to make sure that when we send someone there, it is very well protected, uh, either within uh, this uh, spacecraft or within whatever settlement we're going to build on the surface of Mars. Uh, so uh, even even by sending astronauts to the moon, we'd like to make sure that uh, uh, once they go beyond Earth's magnetosphere, they are at the mercy of the sun. So we don't like you to go there and to be irradiated and to come back sick or dead. So that's why you have to understand exactly how, because to tell you the truth, the universe is very harsh. It's a very harsh environment. Once you leave Earth, uh, magnetosphere protection, you are at the mercy of the sun. So you have to, uh, you need to have special shield in your spacecraft to protect you. But whatever you do, you get some radiation. Even, even, even today, those uh, pilots that, that, that fly a lot around the Earth's uh, North Pole, they do get some high doses of radiation uh, from these highly charged particles. So uh, you need to protect yourself, especially in space. Space has no mercy in terms of having the right equipment and also the right protection for you as human beings. You cannot send space astronaut if you don't have these uh, two characteristics. Uh, very well set. The right spacecraft and also the right shield for your astronaut. Oh. Right, sir. Uh, right, sir. And uh, we have many, uh, Dr. Pan Hello. For a future astronaut. Yeah. Uh, right, sir. And uh, for 20 uh, seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so we are having many questions with us, but uh, since we are running out of time, uh, so I would li like to ask you the last question, uh, which is like, what advice you would like to give to our students, where they, whether they are in school or in college right now? So what advice you would like to give to them? Well, my advice is to, uh, as I said uh, earlier, is to love what you are doing. Whatever you are doing, uh, you are pursuing, let's say, a science career, or uh, business career, or let's say a literature career, is to love what you are doing. Because things advance only if you have that vocation in that field. So if you love science, go to science. If you love uh, engineering, go to engineering. If you have something else, go. Because it is what you love that will help you to succeed in whatever you do. Being in high school, being at university, being at any uh, any science uh, uh, educational institute or academy, what you love uh, is what will help you to succeed. Success is built upon your vocation. So follow your vocation. Right, sir, rightly said. And uh, so what message you would like to give to our uh, astronomy students? And uh, how, what do you think about the new way of teaching that is digi digitally? How, do, what do you think uh, it, it's affecting us or it is a boom, uh, it is a boom for us? Uh, what do you think about it, Phil? Well, because of the situation, so we became all digital. Uh, and uh, uh, for us, uh, it is a good way because uh, I believe we live in a digital world. Uh, so uh, uh, using uh, digital means like teaching and so on, it will open the floor uh, to so many things. So uh, also, uh, time will be well spent uh, when you teach digitally. And also, uh, you can show uh, all what you can uh, be able to show, like media content and so on, simulations. Uh, uh, you can use so many, so many uh, software applications that uh, maybe when you teach them in class, uh, you may not have uh, 
the right board, the right, uh, the right uh, device. But when you do it uh, digitally through your laptop, and Idris has his own laptop, this became very, 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 very easy. So it is time well spent. So it will give you more opportunities to use more tools uh, in your teaching. For me as an astronomer, uh, because in astronomy we use a lot of media, we talk simulations and so on, uh, it has been a plus. It is very important. Uh, so, uh, and uh, believe it or not today, so even when we use our telescopes, there is no need for me to go to my telescope because everything now is done remotely. From my office, using my laptop, I can connect to my, uh, uh, to my observatory, I can do my observation, I can show it to my students right away. So uh, things have become much easier. Yes, we have lost the human touch. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine, we, important. We have, to, we have to play it safe, but it did open so many other opportunities. I believe from my point of view, uh, it gave me uh, more, uh, more tools to touch the mind of my students. Right. It's very helpful. Right, so rightly said. And uh, now we are coming up with many, many, uh, many uh, ways to actually teach, not to, uh, like in the classroom, we have uh, like figured out many softwares, and not only that, but we are bringing it virtually and we are able to connect people all around the world like we are connecting with you. Yes. So it is a wonderful opportunity for children actually, since they are watching us, uh, they will be watching us right now. So they will be connecting with the people all around the world and will be knowing whatever they want to know from anyone. So that is a plus point, I would say. And so what message you would like to give to our astronomy students? Because we are having a club running of us. So there are many students who are associated with us in the astronomy club. So what message you would like to give to them, sir? Well, uh, we are the academy, the Sharjah Academy for Astronomy, Space and Technology. I give you a brief introduction to what we do. Uh, we have uh, space class instruments. So uh, in your uh, study, in your research, you are more, well, more than welcome to use them. So we can have uh, collaboration. So if you love what you're doing as a research, so please, uh, you are welcome. So you can use our optical telescopes, our radio observatory, our towers, of the meteors, our space weather instruments. So you are welcome to use them. If you'd like, if you have a small projects, we can help you to do this research for you and so on. So please just contact us and we'll be more than helpful. We are just, we are, we are very close. As uh, Yoga said, uh, we are virtual. So uh, just, just a click of the button and uh, uh, you have uh, you have our instruments at your service. Right, sir. So as we were talking about being connected digitally, so right now we are providing children to like more such opportunities to connect digitally to any place anywhere in the world. Uh, yes. A very wonderful thing, sir, that which you said right now to connect. You know, it's a one finger away actually. Just click it and you are there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, like, uh, what uh, message you uh, message you would like to give to Space India? Because we are working in the field of astronomy and space sciences from long year, and uh, conducting events and club sessions for the students all over the world. So, any message you would like to give to Space India, sir? Well, uh, space is beautiful. Believe it or not, uh, sometimes when I saw some space videos. Believe it or not, sometimes I cry because it does touch my heart. Because you, with space, as usually say, there is no limit. You can learn anything and everything from it. Whatever field you, you take, you push, you, uh, space is in front of you. So we are always eager. We are always curious to know about uh, anything related to space. Today we have a, a, new, uh, a new satellite, uh, uh, we have a new result. Uh, oh, they found, uh, maybe they found an exoplanet that has water. Oh my goodness, there is life there because we have water. So every one of us is curious about uh, space and space news. So space is all around you. you just have to open your heart yeah. and uh, it will be with you forever. Right, sir. Right. Well said, sir. It is actually, uh, we just have to open your heart and then it's all over there. And uh, so with that, uh, any message you would like to give to our organization space uh, about 
anything like uh, uh, any any message you would like to give to space india sir space organizers yes well uh, you know you are like us we are responsible for these young brains young minds we have a big duty to make their life much 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 better what you are doing in your organization is wonderful because this is the way that we can approach the young mind from the young age to let him know that uh, science is very important so understanding what goes what goes around uh, you may have a very simple phenomena like an eclipse uh, maybe you would like to observe a new crescent uh, so all of these questions will open the mind to the new to the new to the new students so that's why you have a duty as an organization to bring light to these people to teach them the beauty of science the beauty of space and because we we are all limited in terms of resources that if we get all together we may give a lot to each other so that's why so it is a duty to uh, reach people uh, what you are doing as a public outreach is very important and uh, it must continue so uh, whatever you do today uh, don't expect to see the seed tomorrow because you are putting in that small child brain something beautiful he may see he may see a, a full moon he may see an eclipse and this image will stay in, the, in his brain forever and maybe i mean because of this maybe he will be a space scientist in the future so please continue and let me congratulate you on all what you wing and hopefully 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 everyone is going to benefit from it yeah so we thank you for that thank you thank you so much sir for your wonderful words actually it was really motivating and, and today's interaction was uh, uh, actually so good i do not want to end this and want to continue with all the questions and with all the queries which our uh, audience is having and uh, I, i actually loved it uh, while interacting with you because the time just passed away it was so yeah. interesting it was so like enlightening to know each and every fact about mars and the way you told it sir it was uh, like uh, amazing it was wonderful and i'm sure that our audience our students and everybody who is watching us will be actually Uh, like getting motivated of course uh, the, because the way you explained the, they are surely going to get motivated and going to learn a lot from this yes. interaction and uh, with this i would say that i hope uh, i hope that all of you enjoyed the interaction and as i can say for myself i have already said that i loved the interaction throughout along with the knowledge i grasped grasped and i hope dr fernini cleared all your doubts and i cannot thank you enough sir for taking out your precious time for enlightening us on this astonishing topic of mars exploration and i hope that in future also that we will be continuing to have such kind of interactions with you i would also um, uh, like to inform uh, our audience that uh, space has started its digital platform during this uh, pandemic for students all over the world with the uh, with the name i astronomer club having sessions for all age uh, all age group so if you are interested you can uh, watch uh, we can have a look at our website learn.space-india.com uh, the link is mentioned in the details uh, on the on the youtube uh, so and with this i would also uh, like to say with the quote uh, which is very important that uh, that it, as the sir isaac newton says what we know is a drop and what we do know Uh, what we do know is not, what we do not know is an ocean so uh, ocean is yet to explore and i hope today you added a an, another strong a small drop to your uh, pool and tomorrow you are going to make it a ocean and uh, before we uh, like end this uh, or be before we end uh, this uh, uh, interaction i would i'd like to highlight few questions which were very interesting which were very uh, the best questions i would say for today's interaction uh so so that uh, children you know that your uh, your questions are very very important for us because with your questions only we will be able to solve uh, uh, all those all these queries and i'm sure uh, like in, uh, we we are also taking new ideas we are also uh, 
having new questions in our mind that okay why this happened or why it is going to happen or why it will happen so that uh, it is very important to ask questions so we have uh, bhargava and uh, for who is who is from iisc college shubhangini aprajita and then we have aziz ahmed uh, shamji who, who is from chandigarh engineering college arman sinha who is from uh, kulachi hansraj Mo uh, model school so uh, students uh, we liked your questions they were very uh, very good and uh, dr fernini also enjoyed uh, answering all those questions and we hope that in future we will be continuing with the more and more interactions like these and enlighten you with all the knowledge we you want to grasp related to uh, space sciences and uh, before i uh, before we leave i would like to thank again dr uh, dr fernini for being the part of uh, this wonderful interaction and making it actually uh, possible and worthwhile so thank you so much sir thank yeah, you welcome. for uh, for taking out time for this interaction and uh, enlightening our students with all the information and uh, for our students we are having a small feedback form also attached in the in the link you can have you can fill the feedback form and give your feedback related to the interaction whatever feedback you would like to give it to us so thank you so much for attending uh, this interaction and uh, we hope to see you again in our next interaction thank you so much thank you very much see you next time thank you so much it was wonderful actually having a talk with you sir thank you you're welcome so we can we can we can we can have more collaboration between us and uh, you know that we have we have a nice planetarium so we can have also a yeah. virtual planetarium show if you want so we can set up a schedule with my team and it will be wonderful for the students sure sure it's a wonderful thing sir we surely will be having such uh, such thing and i saw the pictures that you showed so to us it was wonderful and in fact i personally would like to come over there once this uh, corona thing gets yeah, welcome we would like to come and we would yeah, like welcome. to bring our students also to, over there to have a look and to explore more and more about space sciences and the opportunities they can get over there it was really yeah, welcome yeah welcome so we may arrange we may arrange that in the near future okay thank you thank you so much sir yeah welcome welcome thank see you then bye bye sir bye thank you so much